up. <laughs> Hold, please. Helps to turn the speaker on when you're doing sound effects. <laughs> there we go. It is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty Business. Sorry about that misstep of the opening. Usually, you know, I'm right on it. I realized too late my speaker was off. Whoops. My bad. Hey, I'm your one host, Vegas J. And with me, I have tonight's, or not tonight's, but Thrifty Business, Thrifty Business's third male co-host, my boy, David Maragdia. Oh, I had it. What is up? <laughs> I had it, too. That's what's up. You had it, man. What's the deal? Okay. I forgive What's you, brother. How boys, are you, man. dude? I am so glad to be on the show with you, man. I know that uh, it's been a while, and I love getting to to chat with you. So whenever I get the opportunity, I really, really enjoy it. So thanks for the opportunity to be on today. You are welcome. All right, let's get right to our uh, start start of the show. Then I'll show you how I put it together with our guest. <laughs> Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum out of a different tiki mug, and I try and match it up with our guests. And our guest tonight is the one, the only, Brianna Moeller Green. Hello, Brianna. How are you? What's up? What's hey, everyone? All right. I do pretty good <laughs> at matching up, and lately, I've been on the string of, yeah, I got it. So, tonight, it was kind of easy. Your last uh -oh. name is Green. So, I went and picked one of my favorite <laughs> green tiki mugs, but it is a good lesson. So, here he is. And this does, this business does not exist anymore. It was actually a tiki business called the House of Tiki in Costa Mesa, owned by my buddy Wes. And he made this mug in three colors, this beige and blue. And if you can find them, and I've seen them out in the wild, you can get around 40 to 50 bucks for them. If you happen to find all three colors, you can charge more than a piece. You can probably get it for, you can probably sell the three for about $200. And Brianna lives in New York. So I have some colonial white rum from upstate New York. Nice. There we go. See, see how easy that was tonight. <laughs> so uh, David, what are you drinking with us this evening? So generally it's a gallon of water a day. Uh, it's been a long day. So I stole my wife's monster energy drink. I'm about halfway down and I'm probably going to be up for three days. <laughs> and Brianna, what are you drinking tonight? The Aldi's version of the monster <laughs> diet monster energy. That one not, dollar <laughs> that was not planned kids all right <laughs> Brianna, sit back relax enjoy the show just make sure about the half hour mark you're not picking your nose all right all right we'll see you in a little bit and before we go any further some of you have never seen this shirt before i just saw in the chat what's up with jason's shirt well some people who don't like me all that much tend to call me an asshole online so i decided to fully embrace it and I made my a-hole shirts, always helping others learn eBay. So there you go. There it is. Boom. All righty. Let's get right to it, shall we? Let's get into it, my man. There we go. Time for our scores of the week, where David and I will show you the cool stuff we sold. Usually these are bolos. Be on the lookout. Things you should be looking for when you're out thrifting. David, you are away first, sir. All right. So this is super cool. I got this out um, a Goodwill in my area. And it's so weird because whenever you find like roller skates or skiing stuff, for some reason in my area, it's crazy overpriced. But these, these, uh, these boots were actually uh, folded up and like all discombobulated. And the only thing that caught my eye was two things. It was the color. And of course, it says Solomon. And I know that's a really, really, really expensive brand. So I said, man, these are funky colors. At first, I didn't even think they were a match because they were different colors. But they <laughs> are a match. And that's exactly how they're sold. They're, they're like mixed match colors. Um, bought them for $3. Big old and, three bucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, like the two ninety two deal or whatever at, at Goodwill. Sold for ninety seven seventy seven, And they were like pristine condition. Very nice. And we're going right from bindings to books. Yes. So another thing, uh, books. I got, uh, I went to a yard sale, got these um, 
the psychology book here is a college book, 25 cents. <laughs> Don't know much about books, but when I scanned it, I saw that there was a profit to be made at 25 cents. So thirty seven ninety seven, fantastic find. Heck yeah. Stayed in, stayed in the same realm and about the same price. <laughs> yes, yeah, same yard sale, same 25 cents, thirty two seventy seven for this chemistry book. So, uh, you know, at the end of a semester, it's always good to, you know, hit up your Goodwills and stuff. I, I should take my own advice. Um, I don't do it more, you know, more often, but hey, this one definitely paid off for me. So 50 cents there turned into about 60 bucks. I can't complain. No kidding. Oops. Scroll down a little bit. All right. So the Mercurial Glide 3. Um, if you know anything about soccer, I do a lot of um, sporting goods equipment. And so um, Mercurial uh, Nikes are, are pretty cool. And so they always come in like different colors, wacky colors. These were brand new and I got them for about three, three or four dollars and uh, put them on there. Thirty eight seventy seven. So I'm really, really pumped. I was really pumped to find them. If they were in my size, I probably would have just kept them. I don't even play soccer when my kid does. And so I would have just kicked around the yard with them, but they didn't fit me. So, um, you know, they're uh, nine and nine and a half. And so I'm, I'm a man. So I don't wear that size. <laughs> I'm a man, baby. I love it. <laughs> All right. Some of you saw my Ronald McDonald on the show last week, uh, and it sold to someone who saw it on the show, and they were they were in my Facebook groups, and they liked the phone, and so that's off to them. So thank you for the purchase, and I picked that up. That is super dope, I by the way. For, uh, like, don't listen if you bought it, uh, but it, but you know, I picked it up for fifteen bucks, so one hundred and thirty dollars, and. But uh, Ronald sitting down is more rare than the Ronald standing up. So if you've ever seen it, you'll know it. Uh, let's talk boobies. This is a little book I sold today. And uh, I should have taken a, a picture for scale, but it was only about this big. And I, let me make it a little bigger here. It's called The History of Sex. And oop, I, I bought it for $2.99 out of the Rock of Book section at a record store. And as you can see, I sold it for $75. So let me tell you, wow. if boobies doesn't bother you and you have a bookstore or record store that has an erotica section, always start there. Always, always, always. Good info to have. And then we're going to go from boobies to Oprah. Although not all that exciting, this was a hoodie from Oprah's network, own Oprah Winfrey Network. Uh, and that was it. Just that little own on the front, nothing even on the back. And it was only up for less than a month, and I paid uh, three ninety nine, sold it for fifty dollars. Woo! Nice. And then I always like to show a good uh, CD score. Now you're not probably going to find the CD, but I wanted to show you the kind of money that can be made when you learn how to scan, and especially when you take my classes because I teach this quite heavily. I bought this at the same store I bought the book. So the book I spent three bucks on, the CD I spent ten bucks on, and I sold for seventy five. So like David said. My $13 turned into $150. So there is That's good awesome. money to be made on a variety of products. That's why we show the scores. But unfortunately, <laughs> sometimes we got duds of the week. And this is brought to you by WorthPoint. Had David and I used WorthPoint, we probably wouldn't have these duds. Real quick in the chat, and this is for anyone who ever watches a YouTube show. If it is blurry to you, it is not blurry to everyone. Uh, down at the bottom of your window, there is a little gear. If you click on the gear, you're probably watching it in a whopping uh, 360 or 240. You want to switch it to 720 high def, and then it won't be blurry. So there's just a little tip for you. All right, David, your first dud is up. So this dud, oh gosh, it's just, it, it pains me to look at. I think it's a dope jacket. Um, I found it for five bucks and it is made in Italy, Coca-Cola. So you would think, you know, Coca-Cola would fly off the shelf. I've been set, trying to sell it for two years. Two has years? not sold. Yeah. Wow. And I'm talking about, I've had it at like $150 to start off and I cannot get the thing sold. It is so cool to me. Um, the condition is, is perfect, but for some reason it's well, been maybe a Maybe someone will see the show and want to buy it. So uh yeah, the spot cool. corner store head over there and pick up a kick-ass coca-cola jacket ah uh, okay so if you all follow my youtube channel um i did a segment on the prongles uh cards against humanity target exclusive potato chips 
And um, those are basically a, a novelty item that in, on Black Friday, um, Cards Against Humanity, the game, throws out some sort of novelty limited edition item and they sell it super cheap and it flies off the shelves at Target's. And um, this was this one's, you know, 2017's Black Friday one. And it uh, I was about a day late. I saw a ton of people selling them. I got them for a couple bucks and I'm still stuck with them. So should I do it? Yeah, let's do it. Because in my household, the Maradiaga household, we have to put our money where our, where our mouth is. I told my wife that it would sell. They still have not sold. I have two flavors. <laughs> I have salt and potato and onions and cream of the prongles. I will be eating expired prongles. There we go. So the first time ever we've taken a dud and used it on the show. There you go. Now he's got snacks. All right. I love it. <laughs> All right. So there's David's. Here's mine. I bought, uh, I love the movie Inside Out, and I found these laptop bags from all the different emotions, and I picked them up for seven bucks each, thinking, come on, Pixar, Disney, always a winner. This is the first one I sold. I bought, I paid seven, and I sold it for 15 with free shipping. Mm. Not a good return, and I still got three more. So if you're a fan of the Inside Out movie, come to Tiki Pug Music and buy the rest, please. And then uh, Tech Stuff usually does pretty well. I guess this was just a little too boring. This Google logo mug uh, finally sold for twelve ninety nine, but I did charge shipping on this one, and I only paid a buck fifty, so I did make a few dollars. But it wasn't the grand uh, money I was hoping to make. I thought this would be more like a twenty five dollar mug, but oh well. When you realize you have a dud, the best thing to do is see if you can get rid of it and make some money, or not. If you got a snack, you, you can have a little snack. So absolutely, get you a prongle. All right, now it's time for. Where in the world did our stuff go? Now, David didn't have anything, so I'm going to be the only one doing this segment tonight. If you've not seen the show before, we highly encourage to always offer international shipping because people all around the world want the cool stuff that we find here in the United States. And this week is no different. I actually had a couple to choose from this week. But I went with Warsaw, Poland. And this is Betrayal at Condor, an old school PC CD-ROM game still sealed. And someone in Warsaw paid $28 plus about $28 shipping. Wow. Because they, uh, apparently CD-ROM games are all the new rage in Poland. So th that's where they're at. But hey, if I didn't have that up as an option, I would not have sold that. So please, please, please. It is super duper easy to ship worldwide. And why limit your customer potential customer database to 300 million when you can have a potential customer database of 7.4 billion? That is a much better customer database. Yeah, the um, uh, the obsolete or vintage media, it sells quite a bit. And I'm gonna actually going to use this platform. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I was talking about it this week with my kids. They are in elementary school now, and they were doing the Oregon Trail game, which is now is like all futuristic. And I was like, back when I did it, like you died from scabies, and it was like, you know, 16-bit Sega Genesis. Yeah. Um, if anyone has that game... I will buy it from you. If, so if you have like the 90s version of that game, if you were in your 30s and you had it in the fourth grade or your teacher had it or you found one at a thrift store, hit me up because I want one for my computer. I want to show my kids what the real Oregon Trail game is all about. I love it. All right, let's get right into it, shall we? Time for our thrifty tips of the week. This segment is brought to you by Stamps.com, postage on demand print your own postage and shipping labels in seconds. So uh, thrifty tips are things that are meant to help you typically when you're in the thrift store. So to become a better thrifter. So my tip for this week is budgeting and budgeting is huge. And I, I talk about it a lot, not just for thrifting, but for just life in general. I think it's extremely important to watch your money and your spending habits and, um, and it can help you in business. And so one of the tips that I have for you is that come up with a budget, whatever that budget is. If it's $50 a week, $20 a week, $100 a week, whatever that is, go out there and work with what you have. A lot of people are using credit cards to put things on. Um, you know, it's not my style. I'm not judging you or telling you what to do in that aspect, but I keep a budget. And unfortunately, if I don't sell something um, within enough time to, to, to build my budget back up, 
I just don't go shopping. And that's the easiest way to keep yourself out of trouble, out of financial troubles is to keep a budget, whatever that budget is. You figure it out and you stick to it. A, a budget? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, when you're Jason T. Smith, you don't have a but you don't need a budget. But for all of the rest of us, <laughs> yeah, my 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 friends, uh, my friends always say I'm so, I'm shocked you're successful. I'm like I know I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants. <laughs> all right, the other day I saw an ad on Facebook Marketplace for Hawaiian shirts, and here they are, and they listed all the brands, and these are all the pictures they had. So I could tell there was quite a few, and some of the brands were were good brands. And they're asking though, fifteen bucks a shirt. And when I got there, they had all the shirts on a rack in order by uh, brand. I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. I try to cut a deal for the whole kit and caboodle, but they wouldn't go low enough to make it worth my time for the lesser brands, the lesser design. So on the way home, I was thinking about something. When you're in a situation like that, you cherry pick the best and leave the rest. Just keep that in mind. I have gotten so excited sometimes. I still end up buying them all. And I'm like, why did I do that? They were letting me cherry pick. Cherry pick the best and leave the rest. Fantastic tip. All right, now it's time for <laughs> You Have Got to Be Shipping Me. Little tips and tricks to what to do, what not to do to help you out when you are shipping products. And <laughs> David's and mine are quite funny together. We didn't plan this, but I kind of liked it. So <laughs> David is up first. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> Jason puts up the, the picture here of a very neatly very uh, well packaged um, item. So basically the way that I represent my business is by packaging items very well. Obviously I wanna make sure that whatever it is I'm shipping out gets to my customer in a condition that is satisfactory to them. But I wanna take it a little bit farther. These boxes that sip out or these mailers that get sent out, whatever they are, they're a direct representation of myself and my business. And so I want to hold my business to a higher standard. So hey, I wanna make sure that my labels are, are nice and straight. I wanna make sure that the tape is on there. I wanna make sure that the package that I'm sending out doesn't have a whole bunch of Sharpie marks on it or doesn't look like it's been beat up. Now, you obviously you cannot control what UPS or USPS does with the package once it leaves your hands, but do your best and just send something presentable. And on my higher dollar items, hey, take an extra second little uh, sticky note or something and write a little two sentence thank you note on them. That's what I do. Um, you know, does it help? I don't know, maybe sucking up, whatever. Some people look at it like that, but hey, I just want to represent my business and myself in the best possible way. I think this is one of the best ways to do that. Send out really good packages. Now, funny enough, on the other end of it, this is how I got a tiki mug this week. <laughs> now, it was it was in a box too, so it wasn't just this. But there is kind of a reason, and although we, I've always said, don't ever use food packing uh, supplies. This one's a reason. I'm going to tell you why, but it, it's it's also got a little funny end to the story. So here's the three angles. Okay, that's so and, awesome. And and here's the mug. And I did not have this mug. So one of the members of the thrifting board found this mug. I did not have it. When you guys find cool tiki mugs that I don't have, you've got a customer right here. You're not going to even go anywhere else. No fees. I'll just pay you directly. And it's from a place called the uh, South Seas and the Hawaiian. But here's the bummer. So she had noticed there was a chip. But if you look close, which you might, might not be able to tell here, there is a chip with a crack. And mm. so to get it to me, this uh, vintage mug, it's going to be kind of precarious no matter how well you pack. So she did a lot of bubble and then thought, mm, I got these egg cartons. Maybe I will put it in the middle of these egg cartons for a little, even bit more cushion. And so I kind of give her props. I ain't mad. Absolutely. Like because she got me a broken mug that could have been a pile of pieces by the time it got to me. But I knew it. It wasn't like she broke it. I knew it was broken, but it was so rare I needed it. And she wrote a cute note, and I'm not going to share her name. P.S. Please don't make fun of my packing on the show. Ha ha. <laughs> that is phenomenal. So, Whoever you are, you yeah. are awesome. So I definitely, definitely liked it, but I definitely wanted to share it because it's that rare time where you had to think outside the box a little bit and give the best packing you could because you, you had to ship a broken thing. You don't want to be more broken. All right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're not going to send things in like a, a Tiffany box or a Louis Vuitton box, obviously. But hey, you know, do the best you can what you got. That is a prime example of doing the best with what you got. It made it across wherever it had to go to get to you. And hey, you have a, you're a happy customer. So that is really all that matters at the end of the day. 
And bonus, you'll not be able to see, but there's a penny stuck in the bottom. Boom. There. Instant savings. So look at that. I got see it. There it is. Oh yeah. I got one penny back. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. Now it is time for our eBay tips of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you out when listing and selling and even sometimes buying on eBay. Maybe I'll do a buying tip next week. I haven't done a buying tip in a while. So my tip of the week, if you can see here, Jason has uh, picked one of my favorite niches, which is old hats um, around my house. They call me the snapback king, but that's just in my house. So it doesn't really matter outside <laughs> of that. Um, but getting back to the point, look, um, he circled here the dates that something was sold. Now, look, he, I'll give you a prime example of uh of looking at dates and why it's important when you're trying to value what something um, is worth on the resale market. Prongles. They may have sold for 30 freaking dollars the day after they came out, <laughs> but a year and a half later, I'm eating them on the show. <laughs> Make sure that whatever you're looking up wasn't a fad item in 1999 and popular then and not popular now. Okay, just look at the date. Good tip. All right, so here's my little tip. Uh, I just started selling my friend's record collection, 7,000 records, wow. and I'm going to be doing a YouTube series, and I'm probably going to have a contest in the Thrifty Board coming up, and I'm going to give away some eBay tape or some other stuff. Uh, I need a good title for it. So I'm going to start chron uh, chronicling. Is that the right word? I'm going to start showing the process of going through 7,000 of anything, but we're going to talk a lot about records. But the one thing I want to share, if you sell records, especially if the record is colored vinyl, because most records are black, but there's a lot of ones that are special. This one by the band Stars was gold vinyl. So what you do on the opening shot is you pull the vinyl out a little bit. That's your opening shot. So you see the cover and you see the vinyl peeking out to show that this, even though I put in the title, I still want to show that this is the gold vinyl version because there is also a black vinyl version. So I want to make sure people know by the picture, because we all know our customers barely read. They look at pretty pictures and they make purchasing decisions. So make right. sure you show them it is the gold record. That's a great tip. All right. Our last segment of the night. <laughs> Thrifty and outside your comfort zone. You should conquer your niche, but once you're done conquering it, you got to find some other stuff to sell. So you got to drift off into other parts of the thrift store and find other cool stuff to sell. All right, so thrifting out of my comfort zone. If you see here, this is a clutch pressure plate for a Chevy Cavalier <laughs> '90s model. Um, this, uh, if you're in the Secret Beach, stick around for the show in the Secret Beach. I'm going to give you a really pro tip, and it actually is the reason why I got these items. Um, they're completely out of my realm. If it's not a 1989 Honda Civic, I don't know how to fix it. Um, so yes, um, they're on eBay, but they're completely out of my realm of knowledge. And something I tried at Christmas time because they were on closeouts was doggy toys. I had never done doggy toys before. As you can see, I still have five available, but I finally sold my first one and they were a buck 99 each. And so no biggie, you know, when you can when you can buy quantity of something and just put up a listing with quantity, just let it go. And, uh, you know, I've, I've made my money back on all the ones I bought and I'll be well into the profit when the second one sells. So, you know, I gave it a little bit of a whirl. And, and the good thing about experimenting with this one, David, is I help out with the local pug rescue. So even if they don't sell, you know what I'll do? I'll just give them to the pug rescue. They can give them right. the dogs. They can use them when they do auctions to raise money. So it's one of those products where... I could drift outside my comfort zone and there's really no harm. It's either going to be money in my pocket or a donation to help out, uh, you know, uh, p dogs in need kind of thing. Great, great, great idea. I love pugs. All right. That is our segments for the evening, but let's, I got to do a little housekeeping. Then we'll get Brianna in here. So all kinds of fun stuff coming up, both classes and shows. I got just a variety of stuff happening. So let's start right here. Next week, and we got one spot left in the one class and about four spots left in the other class. Next week, we have my classes in St. Louis, Missouri, April 20th and 21st. The 20th class is the in the thrift store class. My friend Kim, who's in the chat right now, wave, wave Kim in the chat. 
she is helping me with the class. And so you got two instructors taking you around the thrift store. And what's nice when I have two, while I'm teaching you one section, Kim is prepping the next section. She is pulling all the good, we'll say, dresses out and some of the bad ones. Then I will hand you to Kim. She will show you all the good ones and the stuff you should pass. And then she will dish out all the good ones. And while she's doing that, I'll be in the CD section. And I'm really hammering CDs because I know it's 2018. I know you can steal, you can stream, you can download anything. But there is, as you saw tonight, I sold a $75 CD. And this week I sold a $30 CD and a $50 CD. So much money to be made. I will show you extensive CD knowledge and how to scan. And then while we're doing that, Kim will be prepping shoes and I'll be prepping games. And then we'll, we'll work back and forth three and a half hours. And then we'll head off to lunch and then we'll kibitz about what we just found. And so that is April 20th. April 21st is my classroom class where it's four and a half hours where I teach you everything A to Z, soup to nuts. I teach you the bolos you should be looking for once you get at home, how to take quality photos, how to do quality listings, and a whole shipping demonstration because I found that every single class I teach, every single student doesn't know every single box at their disposal for priority mail. And so I demonstrate all of them. I teach you how to Frankenbox. I teach you how to FOMO. So if you just go to classwithjason.com, You'll find all the information there. You can take each class separately or together. If you take the two together, you do get a nice price break. So that's that. And we just announced today my Phoenix, Arizona class is coming up May 3rd and 4th. Now, I don't have a fancy dancy, easy to go to <laughs> link. So if you look at the link at the top, it's kind of kind of uh, uh, fakakta mess. So if you go down below, there is a link in the description of the show to the uh, Phoenix classes. Those just got announced. So again, we'll be doing the thrift class and the classroom class. So head over to that. And plus, you can always message me if you got any questions. And my secret beach is open for a uh, limited time. I did three webinars last week, open the secret beach. It's closing as of Saturday night. You don't know what the secret beach is. It is my uh, smaller group than the thrifting board, but we go deep. We, dry, we dive into all kinds of content where I do a weekly, uh, weekly. I do a monthly webinar. We have a guest monthly webinar. We have bonus YouTube shows. Matter of fact, we've got a bonus YouTube show tonight and we how to videos and we throw parties and we go on cruises. It's a lot of fun. So you can check it out at the secretbeach.club. And then coming up tomorrow night, I am doing a late Friday night thrift haul with my friend Sabrina. So, real quick, I want to tease you guys to tune in tomorrow night. If you have no plans on a Friday night, like I don't have plans, you're going to see things like tube socks, absolute vodka tube socks. You're going to see things like Heavy metal cassettes, obituary. We're going to talk about vintage travel luggage. We're going to talk about teaching youngins and the most, the best. Yes, I have not found one. I have not found two. I have not found three nor four, but I have found five San Marcos and Beater Lack blankets this week. So we're going to talk about those. So that is tomorrow night, Sabrina and Jay's Thrift Hall at 930 on the East Coast. And this week, my mom and I are doing our show, Selling Past Your Expiration Date, Being Thrifty Over 50, on Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And this is part two of eBay Vero Talk. If you don't, if you saw on eBay and you don't know what Vero is, you should go watch part one and tune in for part two because if you get a Vero violation, you are in trouble. And next week, Thrifty Business is on a special day. It's Wednesday next week, and my boy Trader Don from Garb Safari is going to be on. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be my first actual Tiki guest. So we're going to talk Tiki and the money to be made flipping Tiki stuff. But enough of all that. Let's get to the guest on hand, shall we? Let's do it. Hey, tonight is Brianna Moeller Green. Brianna, how the heck are you? What's up? I'm great. How are you guys doing? We are good. <laughs> Hanging out. Glad to thanks have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, man, I got all through all my commercials, and we still came in a minute early. I didn't even notice. I was hustling. Bam. <laughs> all right. Whew. I broke a sweat there. <laughs> so uh, I've known Brianna a long, long time, and I'm having my friend. Uh, Debbie is my producer now. And so, you know, it's one of those things in life. And, I, and this is just a little bonus, like, life tip. If you're doing stuff, because David does YouTube shows, and Brianna's got all kinds of hustles we'll talk about, there is a point or you have to start getting help and delegating and help out. You cannot do it all your own. And I run two Facebook groups that have like 32 YouTube shows, as you can see, and classes and parties. And I'm like, okay, so all the people around me who are, who are my closest friends who, who wanted to help, I put them in positions to help. So Debbie's helping out and she's like, oh, how about Brianna this week? I'm like, oh, great. I hadn't even thought about Brianna. So awesome. 
because Thanks. Brianna's got the hustles like you won't believe. We're gonna get into all that. <laughs> so, so Brianna, let's let's start with just a little, you know, little background. Sure. Where, where are you at? I think I see a pet behind you. Do you have kids? Do you have a spouse? Do you have animals? Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a. Uh... Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize there was one right behind you. I see one on the couch back hey, there. Look at that. Oh, yeah. We got two of them, two girls, and a daughter and a husband who are somewhere in the house. And we're, me alone. And what, part of the, what part of the country are you in? Oh, okay, you so I'm, I'm south of Buffalo. So 45 minutes uh, south. I'm close to the Canadian border. I was just up in Toronto a few weeks ago for a conference, actually, and um, close to PA, Ohio. Western New York. Every time I say New York, though, they say, oh, the city? Uh, no. Like, no. <laughs> a Different little more rural. Like where this room came from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let, let, Dave and I, let, let's get into this with her. When, when did you start on eBay? Uh, and, and was that the first platform you started on? Yes. Um, I started on eBay and I started, I mean, I think I must've been 15 or 16. It was right in the mid to late nineties that I started actually. Um, my parents had an account and, um, I've always worked since I was really young. Like, I mean, like a little kid. And, um, I decided that my jobs <laughs> weren't bringing in enough money. So I basically liquidated my bedroom. Um, I was into snowboarding. I sold my snowboard. I collected uh, certain dolls. They sold my dolls. So I actually got my start like 20 years ago. Um, kind of sold off and on over those 20 years um, and then really went full time with it probably eight years ago now. Um, I was formerly a teacher and I left in 2010 um, to do this full time. So eBay was my first and initial hustle. So that makes me sad because I think Dave would probably say the same thing. <laughs> so you were like, yeah, the mid 90s, I was like 15. And I'm like, oh, I am so old. <laughs> 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 the I mid 90s I was married in my first house <laughs> I was 98 class of 98 20, oh actually 20 year high school reunion this year what, what class were you David uh, 2004 oh I hate you even more <laughs> class of 89 is baby. fine what up <laughs> <laughs> oh my first car was an 89 Corolla oh Jesus mine was a 97 Cavalier <laughs> nice my, I, can, my, I got a clutch was, if you need one. <laughs> I got one. I was when I was watching. I was like, "Oh my gosh, that would, that would work with my car." <laughs> uh, mine was a '79 Cutlass Supreme two door. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> With a big ass engine in it. <laughs> All right, so real quick, uh, I hate to stop in. Apparently, I've screwed up the links for the St. Louis class and the Arizona class. So while Dave is talking to Brianna for a second, I'm going to fix them. So back to Brianna. <laughs> <laughs> Brianna, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. Having two young children myself, I find education extremely important. So I would like to know why did you decide to stop being a teacher? And that's it's not like a judgmental question. I just, sure. I just, I know you guys as teachers, you're underpaid, underappreciated, um, and so that would be the easy answer. But I want to know from you personally, why why did you decide to uh, not become a teacher anymore? Um, honestly, I did love it for a while, but I guess just after eight years, I, I've just always had that passion for business and it's just kind of been like simmering below the surface. It's kind of surfaced from time to time. Um, I guess I really got into teaching because my degrees are all in math and science. Um, and I was considering some other, um, career options. And then I decided, you know what, I'm just going to teach because I used to compete in figure skating and I was, you know, I, I enjoyed working with kids. Um, but I don't know, by the time the eight years rolled out, it, it got kind of like monotonous for me. Um, I consider myself to just be like a unique individual and I like to um, like do whatever I feel like doing, <laughs> whatever I feel like doing it. And so I don't know, it's just, it, it was the same day in and out. I felt like, um, and actually some of my students are probably watching because when I was hired, I was only 21 years old. So some of my students are actually older than you, David. Um, I am feeling so old right now. <laughs> how great my beard is. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. It just it just got to be monotonous, and I, I just like uh, being able to do whatever I feel like doing whenever. And and biz business is just my passion. So so someone said something in the chat, and I understand why she said it, but. 
She said, uh, good God, woman in math and science, that's a major loss, meaning major loss you being a teacher, but you applied your skills, probably more so math than science, to you know being a hustler, a business yeah. person. So so yeah. but let me ask you about when you when you left being a teacher. Did you like quit in the middle of a class and walk out or did you wait till the end of the school year? That was my next question. <laughs> so <laughs> I was thinking about that. That was my next question. Oh my gosh. And you know what's so funny is I think I'm trying to think. So the class of 2010, they would have been eighth graders. I'm pretty sure we watched Napoleon Dynamite for like the last month of school. But um <laughs> I also had gone sweet. I, yeah, <laughs> sweet skills. Um, I actually had gone back and um, got got another degree. I got a second master's degree, and I was the uh, assistant principal when I left. So two master's degrees. Oh my gosh! Now I feel uh, now I feel old and dumb. Shit. Uh, <laughs> 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 so when I left, I was like, "Oh, what have I done? I don't want to be the assistant principal." This was like it was way too negative for me, and I was it was just like claustrophobic to have to be in a little office, and I don't know. Just was it wasn't my thing, so. So do you miss well, it at all? Um, yeah, I mean a little bit, but I guess I get a little bit of like teaching in as far as the Facebook world and like helping people, mentoring and coaching and in that manner. And I can do it more like I can pick and choose. And like, sorry, but when you're teaching seventh and eighth grade science, like, there's only so many times I can remind you guys where you know, centimeters versus inches, like what side of the ruler you should be using. It's like every day over and over again, the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> well, uh, Mary Waymeyer, and I hope I pronounced her name correctly. Uh, correct me if I was wrong. Um, she actually asked a question in the chat and it says, uh, Brianna, what level figure skating did you compete at? And then she says, I skated elite level as well. I had no clue we were surrounded by all these figure skaters. This is awesome. Uh, Something no totally out of that my means. field, man. So let's see here. I I quit in the 90s. I was actually a national medalist in figures, um, but they don't even have figures in the Olympics anymore. So you gotta you got to rewind time to see what figures are. Um, but I went up through my intermediate test, and I was competing at the intermediate novice level. And then um, I didn't finish testing out, though. I just kind of, like, left. I just was, like, burned out. I'd missed a lot growing up as a kid, you know, because it was a pretty disciplined schedule. So I just kind of like 15, 16 years old, I walked out and I was done. So, but I mean, at novice level to answer her question. I'll say I, right. I did high school a weird way and, and, and you know, I, I wouldn't recommend it because you, if you're going to focus on like a skill like ice skating or, or figure skating or, or football, but mine was a weird one, but it kind of worked looking back. It was like probably the best ever. So I was a band geek at first. So freshman year, I went off the band camp and I, I learned how to march and we did, we were the band for halftime. And then I'm like, I started working out. I'm like, oh, I want to play football. So sophomore year, I played football. So freshman year, I saw every football game from the field as a band geek. And then I saw every football game from the field as a football player. Oh, and nice. I, <laughs> then I screwed up my back. So junior year, I saw every football game drunk on uh, uh, <laughs> Schaefer Light. And then I got in the yearbook and I went to a geekier <laughs> camp. I went to yearbook camp my senior year. And I got to, to do every football game as a photographer. So it was kind of fun, a weird, fun way to watch football four different ways through high yeah. school. So it was kind of unique. <laughs> but uh, Just and feeling I, I the applied, many onions of Jason T. Yeah, Smith. I've applied all those little skills to all the things I do. Yeah. So has, has, did, the, did, did figure skating uh, prepare you for anything in life? Did you, did you take any skills or, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I started when I was four or five years old. Um, and wow. then I was competing right away. And, uh, yeah, I just learned, um, I mean, like when you go to school and then you have to come home and, uh, do your homework at nine o'clock at night because you had to train for three to five hours every day after school and on the weekends and then weight lift and go to ballet class. And it's a lot. So yeah, like I, I learned to really, I guess that's why I'm so crazy with all my hustles. Now I'm used to being busy. I thrive on it and I love it. And that's what I learned from skating, like really being able to organize my time and be disciplined and diligent about getting stuff done. All right. So yeah, you got out of teaching you're like, yeah, I'm going to sell on eBay. Do you remember, do you remember the first thing you sold? Um, at 15 youngin. <laughs> uh, actually back then it was, um, a snowboard and, some dolls or something that I had collected. 
couple other random things. Whatever was in my room, I just kind of liquidated everything for some cash. That's pretty ballsy. Uh, David, what was your first thing you sold on eBay? Do you remember? First thing I sold on eBay was uh, my mom actually introduced me to eBay. So um, she used to sell back in the, you know, not DSL times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and she used to uh, sell like blown glass, like figurines and uh, just like little trinkets around the house, antiques and that sort of stuff. And uh, it was never really my thing, but because I knew how to use the computer and knew how to type and everything else, my mom would be like, okay, just take the pictures, do this. I want you to write this and this and this. So my very first item that I actually sold for was for my mom and it was a blown glass little swan figurine thing. Looked like a candy dish. See that that even though that's fragile, easier to ship. Brianna's like, I, I'll, I'll I'll make my first thing a snowboard. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I <know. laughs> well, I, I shipped a, a I shipped a nightstand yesterday, so nice. The, the big stuff doesn't scare me. <laughs> I've got my first one that left math teaching and went to eBay too. I didn't realize we'd even have two of you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. All right, so. So, so, you know, the next question is, since we're talking about hustles and talk about different platforms, because that's the one thing that you should be uh, cognizant of if you're selling on eBay. And eBay is my favorite place to sell. But all these CDs right here are on Amazon. And I use a lot of the local apps. And I should be using some of the other sites like Macari and Etsy and stuff. And I'll get there. But you should not have all your eggs in one basket for a variety of reasons. One being, what happens if you, if you get a Vero violation? Tune in Sunday. Uh, and you get yanked off of your platform. If you're only there, then you're like, oh, we're go there goes my income. Yeah. So you should be other places. So, so Brianna, what, what led you from eBay? And what was the next stop on the train of uh, Brianna going around the e-commerce world? Um, basically Amazon. Um, so I don't even know how I stumbled upon it. I mean, it had to have been 2011-ish maybe. And I started going through my eBay store and um, cross-marketing everything that I could and just doing Merchant Fulfilled. Um, and then I started to kind of catch on a little bit to how Amazon worked and how it was kind of a different beast. And then by 2014, um, I started uh, Amazon FBA and then it just took off from there. Um, I've never like fully left eBay, um, but um, Amazon is definitely a big portion of uh, my business now. But that was the next stop, Amazon. So, David, have you done FBA? I have not done FBA. I did just get approved for merch by Amazon, so I'm super pumped about that. I got some T-shirt designs that I'd be um, really excited to put up and see what I can uh, do with that. But no, not I don't do FBA. So, let, and let's you know, because I, I am sure, I am sure there's someone watching right now. There's like, what are you guys talking about FBA? Mer All right, so you can list things on Amazon and be merchant fulfilled, meaning you ship them yourself. So all these CDs I have listed on Amazon. When it sells, I have to ship it. FBA means fulfillment by Amazon. That means Rihanna is sending in products. She's taking her products, shipping them into Amazon, and they're selling them for her, and then they just give her a check. Right. And then merch, which we, we all do, or well, David just got approved to do, merch is when you can make your own T-shirts. Amazon sells them for you. There is no cost to you at all because Amazon just gives you a royalty check. So if you sell a $19.99 T-shirt, what's the payout now? Like 7 bucks, 6 bucks on a $19.99? Oh, it's a little lower now. Is so it a little like maybe like four or five bucks? All right, but still, if you could design a lot of but shirts, yeah, it's free done, money. <laughs> yeah, when he, and we've done shows on that where people are making good six figures just on designing T-shirts. So, so you know, this is a different again, a different lane. And, and then David's getting into it, so he's going to get try I, I, try his hand at it. I usually just use mine for when I'm doing events. So there'll be our group will be wearing their thrifting board T-shirt to eBay Open. We'll have a secret beach t-shirt. We just did a cruise. We had a t-shirt and a sweatshirt. So some fun stuff like that. So Brianna, you, you're on Merge too. So oh, we're, yeah. gonna, we're gonna step away from products for a quick second. Um, and what, uh, when, when did you get into Merge? And, and how, and how? what drove you to, to design um, t-shirts? Actually it was Chris Green. Um, he started his Merch by Amazon group. And I can't remember, was it 2000, end of 2015? No? I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, right around then, I jumped on board right at the beginning of him opening uh, his group. Um, so I've been doing it for several years now. And, of course, that naturally led to 50 million other things. Um, and, you know, I've got designs listed all over the place. And I own 
co-own several companies that deal with Merch by Amazon Design. So that was another were another instance where I took one little hustle, side hustle, and then like grew it like, you know, like all the branches on the tree, like all sorts of different income streams off of that as well. So what, uh, what have you, uh, so many shirts are, what, what tier are you for shirts? Well, that's a whole nother story. Oh, a whole nother let's, show. Let's sit back and uh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> let's see. I peaked at 10 to $12,000 in royalties a month. And that was. Wait, hang on. Let that sink in, everybody. Is yeah. that it? So she's she's selling on eBay, selling on Amazon. We're gonna talk about some other platforms in a second. And and yeah. ten to twelve thousand royalties on shirts. So all you all, all you gotta That's do is nuts. design shirts. And if you can design things that people want, boom. Yeah. And and I can't design. <laughs> Just to throw that out there, I have a good eye for picking out things that I think are going to sell, but I can't design myself. So, but I'm really good at finding people that can do things that I can't. So I outsource for my week areas. That's fantastic. I think it's awesome when you, uh, when you can take the opportunity to use the skills that you have and incorporate those uh, into making different revenue streams. And then not only using the skills that you have, but knowing what you're not great at and finding someone who can do it for you and still finding a way to make a profit off of it. I think that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So David, since you got accepted to merch, do you have ideas already or, or did you just see all of us talk about it? And you're like, I should probably do that too. No. So here's the crazy thing is I actually didn't really know anything about merch by Amazon. Um, but I've been designing shirts uh, for myself and for my business um, shameless plug, Mary Diego Media. Um, but so I've been designing shirts for my own business and logos and stuff because that's what I'm doing uh, to help small business owners. And so I just stumbled across merch by Amazon. And, you know, I signed up. I was like, well, I'm already designing concepts and designing logos and stuff. I said, well, I might as well see what I can do. And I got approved. So I'm going to start throwing some of those logos and some of those funky ideas and artworks and stuff that I do and seeing if it, if it does anything, um, you know, like you guys said, you're not really wasting, you're not investing anything other than your time. If you got 20 minutes, 30 minutes to make a shirt, slap it up there and see what happens. Um, and you're not actually doing any of the legwork, you know, you get a check for, you know, selling a shirt for 20 bucks. I'll, I'll do that all day long. Yeah. So Brianna, do you do your own designs? Do you have that, possess that skill or do you have someone else, you, you get the ideas and someone else does the artwork? I had Photoshop or yeah, like I tried it for two seconds and I'm like, this is just horrible. This is going to take me forever to learn this new skill. So um, immediately went with a virtual assistant and then now I co-own VA rentals and we have a whole team of designers that design for us and for clients. Oh, you have clients too. So oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that because not only you're selling for yourself, you're, you're actually working with people directly. So you have clients. So that's pretty yeah. neat. And that's kind of like how a lot of my side hustles develop. I just, um, I'm just someone that thinks about things a lot. And if I see a need for something, if I want something to make my personal life easier, well, maybe there's a need for it out there, you know, for other people. Um, and that's kind of where, you know, like VA rentals came from. There was a group of us that we don't know how to do our design. So let's hire some virtual assistants. And next thing we know, we can outsource the, their design work for other people as well. To, to utilize that's the kind of sales i love i just love the fact that you can just take a concept and not knowing like i said what your strengths and what your weaknesses are and still find a way to merge the two find someone to do it and make a profit on it it's the almost people like that are listening to this they really need to take notes because that is just a fantastic theory i just love it almost like i call it information brokering mm -hmm. kind of like a middleman Absolutely. That's what I do as well. And, and, and it's, it's great. I just think that more people should uh, leverage what they're good at, whether it be sales or marketing or whatever skills they have, photography, whatever, and find ways to make extra money doing the same things they're already good at. Yes. Yeah. There are so many opportunities out there. It's crazy. People start looking, they'll find them. So speaking of opportunities, okay, so you're selling on, on eBay, you're selling on Amazon, yet that wasn't enough. <laughs> so let, let's, go, let, let's go down Let's go down the list <laughs> and uh, see how and when you got to all those. So I know you sell on uh, Bonanza too. I had, I had a Bonanza sale today. Yeah, but, you know, rarely, 
do I have sales on Bonanza? But yeah, I'm, I'm synced up with Bonanza. Um, I'm cross marketing on Etsy, all of my vintage items. That's going pretty well. Um, Poshmark, um, I'm kind of like utilizing that as like a dumping off spot for some for stale inventory, I guess. So I'm kind of just experimenting with that. Um, I kind of just take a few minutes every day, run run down through some of my uh, eBay listings, and then just create duplicate listings on Poshmark real quick. And immediately, I don't know, I might have fifty items up, maybe not even that many, and already they were selling. So it was nice. It's like stuff that I was probably going to donate anyway. Um, you know, making a you know, couple extra bucks on there as well. Um, and I'm approved for Walmart and Jet, which I've tinkered with, but there's only me. <laughs> so I need to like, <laughs> um, work with, there's some third party um, software companies and programs that I can work with that are going to get me, uh, help me get set up so that I can cross market all my Amazon stuff on Walmart and Jet and my t shirts. And my eBay inventory. So, so what's Jet? Uh, for those who don't know, tell us what Jet is. So, I would compare it to Amazon, basically, but much smaller. But it, it, you can utilize it the same way. Basically, it's like a small version of it. Um, I don't know too much about it yet, and it's not as user friendly to list on there. I'm kind of like a get approved for everything and then figure it out type of a person. So, like, I'm making sure that I have my foot in the door with every marketplace I could possibly get my hands on. When it opens, Rakuten, I can list on there if I want. Um, and then I'll figure it out later <laughs> when I get to it. David, and for the chat, did you know that you could sell on Walmart like we do on Amazon? I did know that. I okay. did know you could do it. I don't personally do it, but I did know you do it. One thing I, I had to, I, we got to talk about this for just a second. Uh, there's a comment here, Karen, feel and i'm i'm getting every difficult last name to to pronounce so I, I hope i pronounced that correctly said i shipped a bumper from a 71 old a cu oldsmobile cutlass supreme from wisconsin to florida nice, nice. <laughs> that was All one of the 300 pounds of that bumper i'm sure <laughs> i shipped a corvette bumper to spain that was one of my wow. favorite ones. There's always one one upper in the group. I think we found her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, screw, screw your clutch. I sold a bumper. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, speaking of sales, let's get to uh, uh, Brianna brought some uh, scores and some duds because we all have scores and duds. Yeah. If you don't have duds, then you're not trying hard enough because you got you got sometimes you got to experiment. Oh, yeah. Check out those cool pants. So, um, like pants? oh yeah, question somebody pants. really was at leg day for sure. Slow <laughs> 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 um, patrol on those. So this is crazy. This, um, I, I don't even know, probably 50 cents to a dollar. I don't even know if it broke down to that, that I paid for the, for these. So my mom and I used to go to these, um, it's like a typical auction where in the back room they have, like we call it the junk room, but they have the box lots where you can just bid on a box and you just, you got to take what's in it. Um, and, um, she went on my behalf when I couldn't make it, um, bid on a box. I, I really, I think she spent a couple bucks on it and it was filled with all of this high end Ralph Lauren stuff. I mean, there were like lambskin pants and everything all brand new with tags. So, um, I can't remember what they sold for because I list everything best offer, but I don't know what I paid 50 cents or a buck. Um, and I can't remember if I showed you Jason, what I, what I sold it for, but, uh, um, and Debbie might have had it and I missed it, but, uh, yeah. but, but it was either way. Yeah. Um, so then I have a sweet little spot that I go to, um, once a week where I can get things for 50 cents. And, um, in this case, this suit, um, I just thought it was cool. It's like, totally 70s looking oh, yeah. um and yeah it was 50 cents for it so i thought eh, i'll throw it on there and i honestly i picked that um price out of thin air like there wasn't anything really to compare it to i, I had to go back because i forgot i didn't have this on the big screen so there's the brighting pants my oh, bad okay. sorry sorry uh <laughs> and, then, and here's the coat my bad all right now i'm caught up i'm so sorry <laughs> i get yelled at <laughs> Now, what is this? Is this from your personal? <laughs> no, what are you kidding me? The day I walked out of there, you know I was on online selling that stuff. That's just long gone. 
<laughs> no, but I did run across these, so I paid more for this than I normally would just because I knew what it was. And um, they were, I got a, several of them, seven or eight dollars, all um, figure skating outfits. I mean, these, a lot of these had sequins and beads on them. Um, and obviously, because I skated, I know that some of these dresses, brand new, can be three, four, five hundred, up to a thousand dollars if they have crystals and Swarovski crystals on them. So keep your eyes peeled for figure skating stuff and also for dance wear. Um, kind of the same thing. And get ready, David. Hold your hat on because holy crap, this last score here. And wow. I, I had no clue what it was. I had wow. no idea. Um, so I got this just at the Salvation Army and just as a, a habit, if it's a military item and it's in good condition, I grab it and I worry about it later. Um, I didn't spend more than a couple bucks on it. so And it went to Canada. Oh, Canada. <laughs> so, so someone's walking around with a big old hood on. That you, is, you know they're not going to use it in the military. Yeah. That is crazy. But, you know, with scores come duds. <laughs> so I am a horrible sucker for dollar items. <laughs> so these were, there were a bunch of these. And then there, actually there were some really cool ones. And they had like little um, sayings on them like Fiesta or whatever, like embroidered on the edges. They're just from Walmart. And um, in our area we're economically depressed enough that like I can go to Walmart, TJ Maxx, like a lot of different stores and get ridiculous deals on things. So anyway, there was a cartload of these awesome wide brim hats for a dollar. Um, they're not going anywhere. They're just sitting there. I didn't take into account, like they're pretty big. So even though they're light, you know, once you put bubbles and all that stuff in there, they're kind of a pain in the ass, honestly, to ship. But they're not moving. Nobody cares. And there's a best offer on them. Nobody even wants them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm so guilty of this. <laughs> so if if um, if I shop alone, like I'm a maniac. Like I don't look over anything. I am just like, get out of my way. I have cart rage. Like I'm whipping through really quick and I'm just pulling stuff. Um, and I can usually feel like the fabric and I know whether it's a decent item or not. And so a lot of times I overlook damage. Um, so the good thing is that a lot of times some of this stuff still sells when it's damaged, but this is a dud It's just sitting there. I probably shouldn't have even listed the stupid thing. Um, but Hey, we, yeah, we all have them. We all have them. All right. So yeah, I got a jacket here. that I've been trying to sell for two years. I know. <laughs> and it's not even damaged. <laughs> all right. So we're almost at the top of the hour. So do me a favor. We got a lot of live viewers tonight. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in live. And those who watch after the fact that can't tune in live, I love you just as much. So thank you, too. Uh, give us a thumbs up down below if you liked it. If you hate what you see, give us a thumbs down twice and really let us know you don't like what you see. Uh, but I want Brianna to end on, uh, you know, you had some debt and you hustled and I'm assuming that debt is bye bye now. So what is kind of like the, uh, the, the last tip you kind of want to give to those who are watching to, to get to the point where you're like, yay, debt is gone. So everything just has to be in manageable chunks and you have to plan things out and take action. So it's great to say, you know, I have a hundred thousand dollars in debt or whatever your debt is. And that's fine. But like, how are you gonna take care of it? What are you gonna do? You know, you're gonna do A, B, C, and D. That's that's fantastic. But you really have to break down the entire process into man manageable chunks, one foot in front of the other, one day at a time, and then um, then you get yourself set up for taking care of that stuff. Um, but it's action. You got to plan, and you got to actually do it. Hell yeah! I mean, I just got to end on that because that's your, that's right, you know. <laughs> If you don't, if you don't execute, you'll never get anywhere. No, and you'll just no. spin your wheels constantly. You'll be in the mud, just spinning wheels, man. Yep. Ain't to get anywhere. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone for tuning in live. Now, don't forget those of you in the Seeker Beach. The three of us are heading over to the Seeker Beach tide pool, and you guys will be able to ask Rihanna whatever you want. And David wants to share something with you too. So head over there, and we will say goodbye here. So, uh, David, thank you for being a co-host. You rocked. I want to have you back, sir. Yes, sir. Anytime you just let me know, Brianna. It was great talking to you. And Brianna, great thank you. you very much for doing the the normal, the regular show. Don't forget, next week it's Wednesday night because I'll be in St. Louis on Thursday. So next week 
It's Wednesday night for Thrifty Business, so tune in there. So thank you, everybody. Secret Beach members, we're heading over to the other link. We will see you there. Aloha and have a great night, everybody.